This is for the Augusta tournament. I was coming home through a howling dust storm. My lower face is scrubbed raw by dirt and wind. Grit scratched from my eyes. It crunched between my teeth. Sand shaped inside my clothes against my skin. Dust crept inside my ears, up my nose, down my throat. I shuddered, nasty with dust. Dust blew through the cracks in the walls, covered the floorboards, and heaped against the doors. Just floated in the air, everywhere. The famous French singer Edith Piaf once sang, Non je ne regrette rien. I have no regrets. Easier said than done. When a mistake, an accident, causes the blame to lay at the dirt by your feet. One can just kick it away. But in order to heal, we must do so. The Freeform Poem, Out of the Dust, by Karen Hess. To hear Ma tell it, I hollered myself red the day I was born, and red's the color I've stayed ever since. Daddy named me Billy Joe. He wanted a boy, instead he got a girl. Here's the way I figure it. My place in the world is at the piano. I'm earning a little money playing, and every little crowd is grateful to hear a rag or two played by a young girl, even when the piano has a few keys soured by dust. At first, Ma crossed her arms against her chest, stared me down, and said I couldn't do it. But the money helped convince her. Ma said okay, just for the summer. In the kitchen, she was my ma. Out in the barn and fields, she was my daddy's wife. But in the parlor, Ma was something different. She isn't much to look at. Her teeth poor, so tall and skinny, and her dark hair always in need of a wash. But from the time I was four, I remember being dazzled by her whenever she played the piano. On my fifth birthday, Ma sat me down beside her and started me on reading music, started me on playing. It was a special bond between Ma and me. It was all we had in those hard times. We hadn't had a good crop since the summer of 31, three years. And soon, there would be a new mouth to feed. You see, Ma tried having other babies. It never seemed to go right except with me. But one morning, Ma went on how she was expecting again. It was an accident. And I got burned. Bad. Daddy put a pail of kerosene next to the stove. And Ma, fixing breakfast, thinking the pail was filled with water, lifted it to make Daddy's coffee. Poured. But instead of making coffee, Mom made a rope of fire. It rose up from the stove to the pail and the kerosene burst into flames. Mom ran across the kitchen and out the porch door screaming for daddy. I tore after her then, thinking the burning pail up back in the kitchen. I flew back and grabbed it and flung it out the door. I didn't know. I didn't know Mom was coming back. The flaming oil splashed onto her apron and Ma, and suddenly, Mom was a column of fire. I pushed her to the ground, desperate to save her, desperate to save the baby, daddy's baby boy. I tried beating the flames with my hands. I did the best I could, but Ma got burned bad. Daddy made a tent out of a sheet over Ma so nothing would touch her skin. What skin she has left. I can't look at her. I can't recognize her. Her body groaning there. It looks nothing like my ma. It doesn't even have a face. She moaned day and night. I wish the dust would plug my ears so I couldn't hear her. Daddy found the money that Ma kept scrolled in the kitchen under the threshold. It wasn't very much, but it was enough to get good and drunk. He went out while Ma moaned and begged for water. He drank up all the money until it was gone. Ma died that day, giving birth to my baby brother screaming for water. 
They wrapped my baby brother in a blanket and placed her in Ma's lifeless arms. We buried them together. Reverend Bingham led the service. He talked about Ma, but what he said made no sense. I could tell he didn't truly know her. He had never even heard her play the piano. The women talked as they scrubbed the death from my house. I stayed in my room silent on the iron bed, listening to their voices. Billy Joe threw the pail, they said. An accident, they said. Under their words, a pointed finger. But they didn't talk about my father leaving the kerosene by the stove. They didn't say a word about my father drinking himself into a stupor while Ma withered, begging for water. They only said Billy fell through the pail of kerosene. I don't know my father anymore. He sits across from me. He looks like my father. He chews like my father. He brushes his dust hair back like my father but he is a stranger. We are both changing and shifting to fill the empty spaces left by Ma. I keep my raw, stingy hands behind my back because he stares whenever he sees them. I can almost forgive him for taking all Ma's money. I can almost forgive him for his night at the bar getting drunk, but as long as I live, I can never Forgive him for that pail of kerosene left by the side of the stove. I look at my hands and I wonder. I wonder if I'll ever play again. I wonder if I'll ever want to. You know, when Ma died, I didn't want to go on either. Now that I see that one day comes after another and another and you get through them one measure at a time, I don't like to go. Not like Ma. I don't want to die. I just want to go. Go away out of the dust. Thank you.